Hi everyone. We're going to learn about the mass balance in this video, which is again necessary when we use the systematic treatment of equilibrium. The mass balance is a consequence of the conservation of matter. So let's try to do an example and maybe that statement will make more sense. They want us to write the mass balance for a solution of 0.1 formal acetic acid. This is a weak acid, so the first thing I want to do is write down its dissociation. Acetic acid dissociates ever so slightly into H plus and acetate. And when I look at this equilibrium, can't I see that acetate exists in two different forms. Doesn't it exist in this protonated form and also in this unprotonated forms? Those are the two forms in which acetate can exist. And what do you think the concentrations of these two forms have to add up to? The formal concentration. So the mass balance then would be 0 0.10 formal equals the concentration of the protonated form plus the concentration of the unprotonated form. That would be the mass balance. So again, I kind of think of this as the total concentration, and that has to equal the sum of all the different forms. In this case, there were only two, a protonated and an unprotonated. Let's see if we can try another one. Okay, we're back to arsenic acid. They want us to write a mass balance for a 0.1 formal solution. And it was nice of them, again, to, sh to show us the behavior of arsenic acid in water. So this formal concentration has got to equal the sum of all the different forms in which arsenic acid can exist. So there's this form with three protons, this form with two, this form with one, and this form with none. So the mass balance then is 0 0.10 formal equals the sum of all those different forms. So arsenic acid plus dihydrogen arsenate plus hydrogen arsenate plus arsenate. All those different forms better, bad, better add up to 0.1 formal. Let's try another one. It's very similar. Let's see if we can write the mass balance for a 0.1 formal solution of a salt containing hydrogen arsenate. So the first, th there's actually going to be two mass balances here. The first thing I want to do is write down the dissociation of this salt, remembering that all group 1A salts are soluble, so this salt will dissociate 100% from sodium hydrogen arsenate into two sodiums and one hydrogen arsenate. So if the concentration of the salt were 0.1 formal, the concentration of sodium is going to be twice that, or 0.2, and then the concentration of hydrogen arsenate is going to be 0.1. So the trivial mass balance is this one, that the concentration of sodium is 0 0.20 molar. And again, Harris calls that the trivial mass balance because you're probably not going to use it in any equilibrium cal calculations. Again, that's because all group 1A salts are soluble, meaning that sodium is going to be a spectator. 
the more interesting mass balance is the one about hydrogen arsenate. This 0.1 formal doesn't just equal the concentration of hydrogen arsenate, although it may have the highest concentration, it will also include the concentrations of all these different forms in which arsenic acid can exist. So you've got to add them. There's one with a single proton, one that doesn't have any protons at all, the dihydrogen arsenate, and then the fully protonated form. This is another mass balance that we could write for this solution. Let's try another one. In the previous examples, you may have noticed that the concentrations of the salts or the solutes were always given, but they don't have to be given. So let's see if we can write a mass balance for a saturated solution of lead 2 bromide. And when you see saturated solution, I hope you're thinking what I'm thinking, that we have a solution or we have a beaker of water in this case, and it's saturated with lead 2 bromide. You could actually see that lead 2 bromide solid in the beaker. And what does that lead 2 bromide do? Well, it dissociates ever so slightly into lead 2 ions and 2 bromide ions. You may recognize this as a KSP. And maybe you didn't realize it at the time, but when you said, okay, at equilibrium, I'm going to call lead X and bromide 2X, you sort of were writing a mass balance. By calling lead X and bromide 2X, you were saying that the concentration of bromide was twice the concentration of lead 2. This is the mass balance for this solution. Now, I want to pause for a moment because I've seen students get confused over the fact that in the chemical equation, the 2 is in front of the bromide, but in our mass balance, the 2 is in front of the lead. Don't panic about that. Imagine that these are formula units of the lead 2 bromide, where the red circle is lead, and the blue circles are bromides, right? PBBr2, lead 2 bromide. And we've got three formula units. If this could fully dissociate, how would that look? Well, we would have three leads, right? This is our lead. And we would have six bromides, wouldn't we? This is our bromide. So isn't the bromide concentration, which in this case, I'm just going to call it six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. I have six circles. Isn't that twice what I have of the lead? which is only three circles. So don't panic that in the chemical equation, the coefficient of two was in front of the bromide, but in the mass balance, it's in front of the lead. Let's do another example that's kind of similar to this one. So again, it's a saturated solution of zinc cyanide. Again, I hope you're thinking what I'm thinking, that we have a beaker of water that's been saturated with zinc cyanide, so you can actually see that solid zinc cyanide in the beaker. So what does that zinc cyanide do? It dissociates ever so slightly into zinc ions and two cyanides. That's a KSP. Now, unlike the previous example for lead 2 bromide, cyanide can do something else. Cyanide can behave as a weak base to form hydrogen cyanide and water in a KB reaction. So I always begin with the KSP. And again, by calling zinc X and cyanide 2X, you are saying that the cyanide concentration is twice the zinc ion concentration. 
But is this the only form in which cyanide can exist? No, it can also exist with a proton attached to it. So the real mass balance is going to be that HCN plus cyanide, both of those forms are going to equal twice the zinc ion concentration. So those are all the examples I have for writing mass balances. Hope you practice some on your own, and thanks for listening.